Christmas season seems to be going a little faster this year. We just had um, Christmas, and then um, after Christmas, we had the, um, that was Thursday, um, Thursday and Friday. Then Saturday, Sunday, we had our Mass for the Holy Family. And then this, this um, Thursday and Friday, we had the Mother of God and for our New Year. And now the next Saturday and Sunday this week, we have the Epiphany. And next week, we'll have the Baptism of our Lord, which finishes the Christmas season. Epiphany, as you know, means appearance or manifestation, the appearance of Jesus to the nations. Years gone by, especially in the uh, 40s and 1950s, um, we used to celebrate three different manifestations on the same day. The coming of the Messiah, um, um, the Magi, the baptism of Jesus, and the wedding feast of Cana all were on the same Sunday. Now, we separated these feasts. So today we have the Epiphany with the Magi, and then we'll have the baptism of the Lord uh, next Sunday, and then we'll have the wedding feast of Cana that'll come up after that. As we listen to our first reading, our psalm, and our second reading, they all talked about Jesus um, coming to the nations as a savior. It also talked in that first reading about um, the gold and the frankincense. Our first reading emphasizes the salvation of the non-Jews, speaks to all nations coming to the Lord and walking in the night, light and not darkness. The Magi came to bring gifts to Jesus and they followed the star. A second reading from Ephesians says that Jesus called all people, Jews and Gentiles alike, to salvation. This certainly was good news to the Gentiles. In the Gospel of Matthew, we hear about the astronomers from the east coming to adore Jesus, which represented all the nations. The Magi followed the sign of God's plan and they followed that star no matter how far it would take them. The Magi themselves can be seen in a sign of God's plan in bringing all Gentiles into the people of God. The relics of the three kings were brought in the 12th century to the Cathedral of Cologne in Germany. Maybe some of you have been there to see them. They are still right behind the high altar in a gold reliquarium. In the Middle Ages, the three kings were given names, Caspar, Malchor, and Balsier. What star guides us into this new year? And what experience of an epiphany have we maybe had and what was it like when we knew that God was leading us and guiding us, perhaps not by a star, but in our hearts or with something somebody else said in order to lead us in the many um, ways that God tries to lead us each day. But a lot of times we don't sp spend a lot of attention to know that. We hear that the the Magi brought gifts to Jesus, the best that they had, it says. The three gifts, though, are symbolic, the gold for noble, nobility, the frankincense for divinity, and the myrrh. Myrrh is an embalmment um, spice that was used for burial. A good resolution, perhaps, for us this year is to give the gift of our heart every day and to thank God for the many movements and the way that we can be open to hear God's plan in our lives and for him to lead and guide us. The Epiphany can be looked on as a symbol of our own pilgrimage throughout our lives. The feast invites us to see ourselves as images of the Magi, a people on a journey to Jesus to heaven. Today's gospel also tells a story 
of the Magi encountering King Herod. Their encounter demonstrated three reactions to Jesus already when he was just born. It reminds us of hatred, of indifference, and of adoration. King Herod considered Jesus a potential threat for his kingdom, and so he hated him. The group that seemed to ignore Jesus and were indifferent to him were the the, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Jewish priests, those that should have known through the scripture that Jesus um, was coming. The group that adored Jesus and offered him gifts were the shepherds and the magi. Let us make sure that we are in the third group, letting us worship Jesus at Mass with the gold of love, the myrrh of humility, and the frankincense of adoration. It has become the star to help and lead others to Jesus as the star led the Magi to the manger. Like the Magi, let us offer Christ our gifts, the gifts of friendship with God and of love of God, the friendship with others, and the gift of reconciliation and the gift of peace. The irony of our scripture today is that the Magi who came to acknowledge Jesus were pagans from afar. Yet the Jewish leaders that only lived, lived um, close to Jesus didn't even travel uh, those few miles in order to adore Jesus. Those who should have cared, they seem to not. I wonder what difference it would make if Herod would have went with the Magi to worship Jesus instead of being jealous of him and finally um, and perhaps he wouldn't have killed those innocent uh, boys under two years and younger because of the threat he felt for this, for this boy to his kingdom. How is Jesus being manifested in our lives and how are we proclaiming Jesus to others? Perhaps by inv- inviting our other people to come to church with us or telling them about Jesus and what he's been doing in, in your life. Perhaps we witness by our Christian example. The Epiphany is a sort of mission Sunday that we are called to be missionaries and tell the good news that Jesus is born and the difference that he has made in our lives. And I'm sure it made a difference in your life or you wouldn't be sitting here this evening. What happened to the Magi, we don't know but they probably went home and told others about the star and what they had seen and what they experienced when they got to see Jesus. And they listened to their dreams like Joseph did and went back a different route and did not go back to King Herod to tell him where Jesus was. So let us listen to our hearts and perhaps our dreams and follow God's detour that he may have or the GPS that's in our mind uh, which we can ponder what God is telling us to do in our lives each day. During this Eucharist, let us come and adore Jesus who gave us something even more valuable than gold, frankincense, and myrrh by giving us his body and his blood. Let us be reminded that the journey of our redemption is from the wood of the manger to the wood of the cross and from the stable cave to the empty tomb. So let us pray today that we can place ourselves before Jesus, willing to pledge pledge to follow the star that Jesus has for our lives wherever Jesus may be leading us and manifest his love to others during this new year, perhaps as we never done before.